All right, what's happening, you beautiful savages? This is Tate Fletcher, and I just want to thank you guys for tuning in. You know, today we've got one of the I don't, one of my old not oldest man. I got so many old friends. That's another thing I would say: don't fucking trust anybody if they don't have old friends. If they're like mm, the guy I know the longest is a couple years, that's somebody that maybe you want to stay away from. It's just a little word to the wise, a little red flag out there, you know. If a chick is like that, for sure run. Stay away from her. That is an insane person. Absolutely. And if she's not, she just had a bunch of shit bags in her life throughout the years, awesome. Let her rebuild that on her own, okay? You don't need the trouble. At any rate, today, my partner, my brother, one of the best men I know in life, is a coach to me just by the way he walks, Keith Jardine. He starts off this episode, and it is fantastic. Every time I sit with Keith, I love him. I always feel like I'm talking too loud because he is such a soft-spoken, humble dude and one of the finest, smartest guys that I know and a uh, real privilege every time we get to sit down and record something. And then in walks the main star, another old friend, and, and he's one of my newer older friends because I've only known him 15 years. Man. Brian Reichel. He's the best. This guy, he started, uh, he got to be known as Red Band. He started calling himself Red Band. And I never knew why, and he explained the origin of the nickname on the podcast. But I met him with Rogan. He came out from Ohio, and he started doing all the videos and compiling data for Rogan and running the website. And, or maybe he didn't run his website. But he did all the, all the media stuff. And he really... Uh, He's a great editor, great at little, putting little stories together, really funny, funny, funny guy. And then he got into comedy uh, years later. And so he's been doing comedy, I don't know, four or five years now. And everybody knows about Death Squad. He built the Death Squad uh, logo. Death Squad is out of, you know, it's me, Eddie Bravo, Rogan, basically walking into a room and them looking at a gorilla like me and Eddie with his ears all chewed up and going, oh, my God, why'd you bring that? You know, Opie and Anthony said, why'd you bring the Death Squad in here? Well, then Brian ran with that shit, dude, and he started a juggernaut of badasses uh, on the comedic field and... You know, he brings in guys to the Death Squad shows, and so it's this label he's got for all these entertainers and performers, and it's really great. And if you see that name attributed to something, you just know it's gonna you're gonna be laughing until your guts hurt. It'll be like you took mushrooms, and if you take mushrooms, ooh, I can't even imagine the experience is gonna be fucking phenomenal. So, at any rate, that's who graces us on this episode of Pirate Life Radio, which is soon to be also found on YouTube. I'm gonna work all that out. I want to thank, especially right now, first and foremost, Nate Harris, at Nasty Nate Harris. That man, he, he's helped put these up when they're horrible, when they sucked, and he's been with me from the beginning of Pirate Life Radio, and um, since it was Stay Bulletproof, uh, when I blew up that charlatan. Anyway, um, at any rate, on to this, like who's done the intros and who's really changed the game, and is kind of gets it all fitted together and forms it into a, a beautiful product is Eric George and he can be found at Man No Sober. Man No Sober. And he is one of the most beautiful enlightened beings that you ever get to talk to. I mean you just look in the guy's eyes and you feel calmer. And he's also a wizard at all things media and, and putting these things together and I really appreciate all the work he's done on, on all these uh, episodes. When you noticed a shift in it and you go, God, Tate really got his shit together. No, no, no. I just met the right guy. Anyway, all credit to Eric. I want to thank my sponsors now. Nuevo Cerveza, nice little microbrew, Mexican lager type microbrew. Brewed at Santa Fe Brewing Company. Um, you can find Santa Fe Brewing Company. They got a ton of great beers they brew up there. And they brew ours. Uh, NuevoCerveza.com. You can find out more, or you can look at SantaFeBrewing.com and find out more there. Um, Santa Fe Brewing is, is made is a, a little brewery that's up in northern New Mexico in the hills and the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Um, and it's a great little spot. Great guys run it. And our brand is Nuevo Cerveza, soon to be found nationwide. I think in May, I think we go nationwide. And um, you can also find it at Clutch in Venice. We have it out there as well. Anyway, great swag out of there, too. If you're a New Mexican, you want to check that stuff out because 
We got these Hecho shirts that are off the chain. Anyway, enough about that. I want to thank Concrete Cowboy. You can find him Concrete Cowboy Dallas dot com. You just Google Concrete Cowboy and look at nightclubs, man. We got uh, up and cracking for three years. We just had our third anniversary a month ago or so, and we just celebrated a year anniversary on my partner Rico Taylor's birthday, which was on the twelfth of November in Austin. So. We've been running three years in Dallas, strong, strongest team in the game, man. And a year in Austin, Dan and uh, Carly run that down there. And it's just a badass, fun-filled nightclub, beautiful women, cool dudes. Um, whoever you go, go in there and run into, man, whether from the door guys to the bartenders to the busters to the waitresses, everybody is solid as a fucking elbow cast, man. Great fucking people there. And... If you're on the team and you're listening, you got my respect and my thanks, and I can't wait to see you next. We're going to be opening in Houston shortly, like in maybe five weeks. And uh, I also want to thank Clutch, different Clutch than the Clutch in Venice, Clutch right next to Dallas, Cedar Springs Road, and that's great all day football, beer, food, whatever you need all day long. Come in there and get your hangover brunch on. We got it all. It's cracking down there. Concrete Cowboy. BloodyMaria.com. I don't drink, but I bet it's delicious with vodka. But I do drink it straight, and it's made with uh, chilies from the. It's green chili from the Rio Grande Valley, and and it's fantastic. Great spicy little Bloody Mary mix, and I just drink it solo, and I love it, man. Uh, it feels cleansing. It feels like you're enriched and like nourished by it. Maybe not as nourished if you drink it with vodka, but you'll feel more nourished. I bet. Give it a try. BloodyMaria.com. You can find them. All over the place, Walgreens and Costco's and wherever, man. I want to thank UndisputedFitness.com, my home in Santa Fe, for all things that are badass. Whether it's strongman workouts, adaptive. Man, i got to talk about these adaptive athletes. Lorenzo Lorenzo Hernandez, he's uh, one of the best, man. And he's up there. You can find him at Adaptive Coach. And he runs this troop of dudes in wheelchairs that are there getting it and that are just inspiring. One dude I think is ready to be a coach even. And uh, they're badass, man. And it's, a, it's just a div- different level, you know. A lot of people are like use that term like, ooh, adapt or die. Motherfucker, these people are in wheelchairs. They have adapted. They've looked at death and they've gone, you know what, not for me. I'm done drinking myself to death, drugging myself to death, or whatever the thing is, or maybe just done feeling sorry for myself after an accident or whatever. And the kind of heart and courage and just ferocity that they attack life with is unsurpassed. I, I You just don't see it very often. And these adaptive athletes, man, I got the highest regard for. And they're badass. And so Lorenzo's starting a deal. Hit him up there. And if you know somebody that, that's looking for that or needs some inspiration, hit up Lorenzo at Adaptive Coach. Um, UndisputedFitness.com is where you can find all, all of those. There are a bunch of experts there. Ruben Rivera just got his black belt. Nate Harris just got his brown belt. Uh, Heather McKernan runs a CrossFit program there. And um, badass coach, fucking great technician. So at any rate, whatever you need that's up there. And also that's where the Caveman Coffee Cave is. First Caveman Coffee standalone spot is there at Undisputed Fitness. So UndisputedFitness.com, check them out. I want to thank my home in Venice, man, Deuce Jim. Badass dudes, they're so inspiring, and they really lead the charge as far as uh, fitness and consciousness. You know, you might want to le- read Logan's blogs up there um, at deucegym.com. It's just amazing, and if you want inspiration, it's no further than your fingertips all day long. And that's really, you know, you'll notice in these, the only people I mess with People that are inspiring, that are trying to enrich the world, man. I really try to surround myself with that stuff, and my life gets way better for it. I would be empty without all these people that I mentioned. These aren't just sponsors, like, oh, uh, it's a uh, cash involvement. It's not like that, man. Like, these people sponsor my soul. They're, they nourish me, man. And, um, and so I just want to share that with you guys. So, at Deuce Gym, or DeuceGym.com. Also, if you're into floating, flotation lab, uh, or flota- flotation uh, kind of experiences, the float clinic at floatclinic.com is um, really a great spot, man, down in Torrance. And, of course, there's the float lab in, in Venice also. I haven't been there. But the guys at float clinic are really exceptional, man, at float clinic on Twitter. And for all my fish oil needs, which I can't get enough of for as far as reducing inflammation, balancing out my omegas, which if you live in 
America, you kind of have wacko omegas if you're a meat eater, probably, because they poison our beef before they give it to us, unfortunately. Sorry you didn't know that, but that's the truth. So I balance out my omegas um, with added fish oil in my diet. I get it at onutritionals.com, original nutritionals, if you Google that. Um, onutritionals.com or originalnutritionals.com. God, I got to check that. Anyway, is that like eight minutes of ads? That's enough. Let's start this goddamn episode. All right? Are you with me? Let's fucking go, right? All right. Thank you. The big Tate Fletcher. Powerful Tate Fletcher. Is a, is a real alpha male. Weightlifter. He's a stuntman. Movie star. Robust, enthusiastic individual. He's huge, by the way. He's like a monster person. One of the sweetest guys I know. He's bigger than life. Actor. Entrepreneur. A fighter. The jiu-jitsu technician. He's also bald and he has all these tattoos. He's just a big fucking man. Uh, a man, a myth, a legend. Tate, Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. Tate. Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. What's up, Tate Fletcher, you bad motherfucker? Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher is Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. Teddy Bear. Motherfucking Fletcher, ladies and gentlemen. That's Tate Fletcher, everybody. The great <laughs> Tate Fletcher. Tate the animal Fletcher. Tate the savage Fletcher. Always moving. There's no stillness with Tate Fletcher. You will find no dust. Tate Fletcher's in the house, ladies and gentlemen. He just said the word erection. Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher's in the fucking house. Tate Fletcher! Tate really blasts out some serious, hardcore truth bombs, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. And welcome to Pirate Life Radio. I'm here with uh, Keith Jardine right now. We're just setting up a uh, shop at our new studio at the Comedy Store on, on Sunset Boulevard. At the Comedy Store. Pretty nice, man. It's really the, the, the epoch, the center, the pyramid of, of all things comedy, the historical aspects of this joint. And we're up in the catacombs of it, which I've never been in some of these rooms. And it, it, there's, like, ghosts in here for sure. Yeah, cool. Got yeah. I, I got to see the secret restroom. Like David Letterman was banging <laughs> midgets up here, I think, at one time. Like, there's a lot of... Yeah, the Seriously? secret restroom up top. Yeah. Yeah, every part of this place. Kinnison. Uh, I mean, God knows, man. No way. It's tremendous. Yeah, yeah. This whole place, the history here is awesome. So you don't want to take a black light to this place? I don't think so. I, yeah. I feel like now you said that, and I have my hands on this table, and it feels weird. <laughs> like, I don't know about that. Yeah. Um, it's good to see you. Good to I, see you, man. I get mad, though, that you don't call me before you come to L.A. I got to find out, like, from Callan, and he's like, yeah, hey, I saw your brother on the plane, man. It was really great to bump into him and all that. And then I go, hey, where are you? And then it ends up you're here for days. So here's a funny story. I get weird, man. I've been trying to get weird. I, I, I had an audition, and you know that. I'm getting trying to method in that a little bit. So I'm Is it wa- because of your movie with Joaquin Phoenix, and you're like, Joaquin gave you some <laughs> tricks, and now that's what you're going to do? I don't know. I need something. How's that? All right. All right. You know, I'll, tr- I'll try that. So I'm walking around, talking to everybody in a southern accent. For the last couple of days. For the last couple of days. And so that's why you didn't call me because you don't want to sound funny? Exactly. <laughs> I would go right with it. That would be funny. You fucking call me next time. God damn it, Tate. What's going on over yeah, there? Well, I'm good, Keith. I'm good. I'm good. How are the hills in Tennessee treating <laughs> yeah. you? I go through the whole thing. Yeah, I'm checking out of the airport, talking to people next to me on the plane. I never talk to anybody next to me, and I'm like, I'm, I'm going for You're it. You're torturing them. They're trying to go to sleep. You're like, no, nah, partner. Now, what do you think <laughs> about this Obama? Exactly. God damn ISIS. So listen, you were were you in Albuquerque for the fights? I feel like we got to get this out of the way. We can't not talk about it. It's the biggest oh. event that's happened in UFC history. Um, where Ooh. were you when that happened? You and Jody are at uh, uh, Twin Peaks, right? We were at Vernon's actually. J- Jody had a little, little Vernon's had it. A little she, she, yeah, she had a little parent saying I was there. Most happy, most elated I've ever been during a fight. I remember I picked Jody up in the air, just like she won a fight, and it was just like. I never felt that way after watching a friend fight before. It was just amazing. It's man. amazing. It was a, it was really surreal, man. I was watching. I periscoped it. You should watch my periscope. Yeah, You'll love it. Yeah. Did you see um, the thing about it though? Like, um, did you see Wink John? Yeah. Like what? No big deal. What? You see? You see? Is he kiss him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the, he looked at him like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like a serial killer, Mr. Winkleton. Oh, like, like, you don't kiss him. What like, he knew fuck? she was going to win. Like, wh- why are you guys acting like this he for? Was like, like, he's, like, so, this is- he's so uh, positive, that guy. And what a what a thing. He's been with her since she's 13 or 15 or something like that. Yeah, I started training with him in, I think, 2002. I went, I, I started training with Wink, and Holly was there. And I actually sparred with Holly a little bit when she was a little girl then. Well, she's yeah. probably in her early 20s. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. The first time I sparred with her was maybe maybe oh three oh four yeah. something like that and she uh she was dating joey at the time yeah and um it was at wink's old place 
and I was just moving around because, like, here's this gorgeous blonde-haired girl that's also dating my friend who's a savage, and and now I have to kickbox with her, and I have to do five minutes or whatever. And so we're just moving around. I'm like, cool, you know, it's a girl, and da 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 da, and moving around, and she fires a straight left. Bam! And, and all of a sudden, there's just blood in my mouth, and uh, uh, and my nose is leaking. I was like, and I just smiled. I was like, all right, fair enough. Like I got the message. Like she was just, uh, she's always, she's like, you're gonna work with me, goddammit. Like you're not gonna do this. <laughs> my, my 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 recollections of, of, in the early days is if like you don't, I didn't know what to do with her. Like right, like you would hit her, and then she would get mad and start coming at you, yep. and like. Okay, now these are punches that are knock you out. Right. Like, what do you do? Like, you, you got to hit her back. And yeah. It's kind of a weird, but it, still, it's a girl, and it's like a weird. Like, I hated that. Yeah. I hated it. It's not comfortable for sure. But I like man, it better when she'd be working angles. She'd be working on something specific, and I'm like, oh, cool. She's just getting outside, and then I'm going to take a hammer in the body yeah. or whatever, you know. And I was like, all right, that's good. That's better. But like, if you follow, like, I think a tw- tweet or Instagram, something like like wh- what that fight means to me is is there's not a better human being that could have the title than Holly Holm. No. Nobody works harder. No. Nobody, the, the her ego will never take over her. Like, she will never, she'll always be the same sweet person that she is. And, and I just love that, 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 that the good guy won, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, I thought it was really wonderful, man, like, what Rhonda represents for the sport and, and what she was, and to see a woman go to those heights and take it. I mean, she really drug women's MMA right to the yep. top of the of the, of the the uh, viewer screen, you know? Like, nobody was looking at that before Ronda Rousey came along, and, and, and what she did was fantastic, and her attitude, her swagger, her all that stuff, excellent, 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 and, uh, and an excellent champion. And, and then to see what happened uh, with, like... I mean, really, like, the, the, the purest, most wonderful representation of humanity. Like, and it, it doesn't take anything away from Rhonda, what I'm saying. Like, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that there's maybe not a better human alive than Holly. And, and to see her, like, she walks it like she talks it, and she's just as sweet as, and as kind as anybody can be, man. And, and um, to see her as a representation of, like, here's the woman that you would like to have because she's not she doesn't get in shape like it's all that stuff it's like for me walking into the jacksons you and her are the are the leaders of that gym and the hardest working people there Thank there's you. nobody really and you didn't work as hard as holly nope. and, and you worked hard as fuck yeah. but like nobody worked like her man and and that's a girl that's never getting into shape she's ready and and for people that have to take a camp and take eight weeks and go oh well I'll get in shape for three weeks and that like you just wasted time when you technically could be getting better holly's always getting better and that's the thing i was just looking awe at her i'm like i don't know how she does it man yeah man she's just an amazing athlete that's the thing and and she's been working at this mma for a few years now and and but she she doesn't even like you're talking about a rematch with Rhonda in what's well, going to be in six months. Right, that's going to be six months better. Wrong, Holly yeah. home. That's what like. I thought. I was like, Dana wants to give Holly to Rhonda right now because he knows how good that Holly can get. He's watching that, and and he wants her to have the best option. That's what I thought because she wasn't the number two. <laughs> Misha Tate was. Yeah, and and I was like. I said, ah, oh. I said, that's a trip that Dana. Does that rematch suck, though? I get and I'm like, why a rematch? Like, John Jones Gustafson never got rematched. Like, the, like, there's a lot of things that never get rematched. Like, what are you doing? And, and Dana got on and he made excuses for, how, or for uh, Ronda and saying, yeah. oh, or can't. And I'm like, that's not an impartial guy that's just standing on the sideline that owns the promotion. That's like, what are you, her coach now? Or are you, are you, what's going on here? Yeah. It exactly, looks, it looks shady as anything, man. Even even talking about game plan things that she, she did wrong. But anyways, that that rematch really really bugs me because like it's not like it was a close fight that went. I mean, I see sometimes right, like like right. the fifth round kind of definitive. Rough, yeah. Every aspect of the game. Holly took her down. Yep. Holly defended the armbar. Got Holly defended the clinch. Holly yep. beat her boxing. Holly did everything. God, the way she took the center when she walked out, dude, and she pounced out to the center of the yeah. cage. I was like. Oh, yeah, girl. I was like, "That's you just live right there. Stay right in that center. But then even to where she'd get her back towards the fence, I was like, go, go, got to move. Let's go. Let's yeah, cut. Yeah. Oh. And and she did. I mean, even even when she'd get clinched there, she was safe. She'd kind of crow cop her in the throat yeah. and then move out. And then, oh, man, so she made, impressive. She, she made Ronda fall on her face by footwork and moving by not out even of her talking, way. Though, yeah. We've seen two other people do that. 
Anderson Silva, Leota Machida. Yeah. Anderson did it to Chris Lieben. Chris Lieben fell down like four or five times in the first round when they first fought. Yeah. Anderson's first fight in the UFC. And, and, uh, and then Leoto, he sidestepped the double leg from Tito, and Tito just got a face full of fence, <laughs> and there was no, no Leoto there. Only times we've seen that. And she made her, like, that's, it's crazy, the kind of footwork that that is. And, and Ronda, I think, is an excellent, excellent MMA striker. But it is checkers and fucking chess, yeah, yeah. man, when you mess with the six-time world champion. And then also I want to give... Like, but, but that's amazing recall, though. But how does that warrant a rematch right away? Wouldn't it be more interesting to see Holly fight Misha and then, then Ronda fight some girl and work her way back yes. up and like watch the champion work her way back to the title fight Absolutely, and all that? It's, it's so interesting. That's the thing. is like have, have her, She needs at least two fights before she goes and, and, and goes for the belt again. She wants you to get, to get right back in there. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. What I really hope, too, man, when I thought afterwards, I, I saw... really pissed me off, man. I saw all these crummy memes about Ronda that were really ugly and mean-spirited and they're all over the internet and god damn it shame on you if you giggled at one like it's, it's awful like these are people at the pinnacle of the sport that are out there representing themselves in a, in a way that most people that are watching can never ever appreciate just appreciate it for what it is and go on from there but like yeah. this thing when people lay themselves out like that and people ridicule athletes out there I, it's just sickening to me and and, it, and and i saw even a guy and he was a he was a fighter i guess i think it's, he's certainly not in a warrior class but he was on one of my friends threads on on uh facebook and he says he says uh, they, they showed a meme of her and she's she's kind of out like uh wobbly still ronda is and he's like yeah i love seeing her I, I love just seeing her out of it like that and i go why would you like to see somebody diminished like that why does that please you and he goes oh, i just don't like the way she carried herself and this and that and da, da. i'm like so you want to see her hurt though because of that that's like what are you isis that, yeah. that, that's ridiculous man that's like what you said right on about warrior class. Like, I don't like the way she carried herself a lot of times yep. either. Like, I don't like how she didn't shake hands yep. after fights and stuff but like that. But I don't that. want to see her get hurt. No, man. And and just, and you got to have that respect for what she did, like you said earlier. Absolutely. And what she did for the sport. And she went in there and she she fought the warrior's fight and she got knocked out. You know, that's a chance yep. you take. So what? Yep. But then you got knocked the fuck out and all that shit. Like, all that yeah. stuff, man. It's just like, ugh, ugh. That's yeah. why I say fuck fans. Yeah, you know what? Like if you if that's what you guys are think fans are, then you can save Dude, that. These shit. are people that's never taken risks and never lives. taken a risk. Yeah, it's that deal between spectators and 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 uh, and people in it. You know, it's yeah. like it's like cool, man. Like what, whatever, be a spectator, but like but understand what that is. Like you, that you uh, and the things that what that is is that you have no idea. You don't you don't have any clue what it's like to roll the dice, man. When you're like, e, I don't know about the outcome. You never rolled the dice. The only time you roll the dice is when you fuck your old lady without a rubber, you dummy. Yeah. Like, stop it. You know. Yeah. There's, Anyways. Yeah. But um, there's watching the soap opera. They're not watching the Warriors. Like, man, I'm not even the slightest bit bagging on American fans. But you go to Japan and watch fights. Sure. Like, it's just a whole different culture out there. It's quiet. They're appreciating every little subtlety, every yeah. little movement. And each person out there is like a god to them, like, like just because they... Because they, they, they know what they're doing. They're, yeah. And they know what they're not doing. They're like, yeah. I'm not putting myself out there like that. I'm yeah. not training like yeah. that, you know? It was a cool thing. Uh, that meta challenge was this weekend, and and um, and, and Ruben uh, competed in that. He, he uh, It was like the semifinals of the thing, I guess. And... And he did great, man. But it's like being in that room um, of that show, and it's just athletes in there, and everybody's silent, man. And then there's if something happens, they appreciate what happens, they clap, cool. and, and it's just quiet. And it's just it's a room full of savages watching two high level guys grapple, and uh, just pure appreciation. And I, there's something really beautiful about that. Yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. Just. Whoever, and a lot of people do like do their things, but whoever you are in whatever role of life you're in, you've got to take that chance and do that one thing that makes you super scared and, and to plan for it and to go do it, man, that's living life. Yep. It's that, that thing you always say, like that seek death. Yeah. Is that, is that you know, is that like look towards that thing that's going to that kill you and let yourself get rebuilt every day. Because that, that's the thing a dude told me one time. He goes, you know, the you that walked in the door is going gonna, is gonna to suck. That's going to fail. You have to be a new you every day. You've got to walk in fresh, man. Yeah. You've got to have fresh eyes, fresh ideas, and move towards that. And that's, those, like, people are like, what makes the difference in your life? You know? and, and for me, what, what's really like I, I see crystal clear 
is just who you're around, who you, who you surround yourself with, and and what I look for in people is the people that take those risks. Like, like in the in the room right now, uh, Brian Redman is here. Brian Reichel from um, <laughs> from Joe Rogan's uh, podcast. He's his producer. He's the creator of Death Squad Network. And um, but when when I met Brian, the first time I ever met him, they they pulled up in a. It was, it was the first time I started riding in limousines, and um, and <laughs> him and Rogan pull up in front of my apartment, and take me to the airport because uh, we're going to go I don't even know where we're going if we're going to Vegas or Boston or where but um, you know finding out stories and like and, and there's like guys like him and like Ari and, and like going around and going wow Brian was just a kid that was of interest that was on the internet and that was making videos and doing funny stuff and creative shit and in a smart way and Rogan's like hey do you want a job like you could be a, like a videographer we could make a show or we could do and he's like sure and like the balls it takes like I, like I come out of Michigan and it's like Ohio and that there's like there's not a ton of options for what you're going to do or you, there's there's certainly not dreams like that where you're like this could happen you know like that that, that didn't seem present when I was growing up like oh you could have a, and to go yeah fuck it I'll come out I'm just like hey that was the instantly right then I was like that's the fucking that's that's a different level of human I like that you know that's what I want to be around I want to be around guys that know how to throw those dice like that and they're like yeah I'll try I'll try because that's really the bottom line is like the more you know there's people that are like I'm willing to try there's people like I just got to play it safe I can't even I can't even try and that's awesome man like if you that dude like I'm not mad about that but it's like I just can't fuck with that like I, I don't want it because that it makes me just want to sit on the couch then if, if everything is acceptable if good enough is good enough I got to say good enough isn't good enough sucks you know yeah it's all about I will get real philosophical here but just finding out who you are who your being is what makes you happy like like if, if whatever life you chose that sincerely makes you happy then that's great man but like you said like we find all these avenues. <laughs> I'm getting weird now. I play finding all these ir- avenues to 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 discover more of who you are, and that's what it is. Fighting was it for a while. It only got me a little bit, little bit. Like I don't think I got enough out Isn't of it. Is that a trip? Yeah, that's what I was saying to somebody. I was like, I was like, yeah, you get a black belt. I was like, cool. And then he met, like, there's people that do that, and they're like, yeah, great. And then it's like there's a mastery of that that happens. There's like. You could go so far with that. And then I'm like, I want to get a black belt in the next thing. It's like almost ADD <laughs> mixed with an addiction for excellence. And like you're looking for, how can I get great at this thing? How can I get great yeah, at this thing? Yeah. How can I get great? But what's it about? Is it about being great? Or is it about, no, to if, 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 if that's the, if the end, if the end of, of, of the journey is your goal, like you're never going to get there. Right. It's, it's the journey. Right. Yeah. It's, Watching it's these comedians today, man, stand up and fail and I bomb. I swear, and, man, I appreciate it so much. Yeah. When you see guys that suck, like the guys that do two years and 10 years, I'm like, I'm right with you on this, man. I'm like, that's cool. Like, but you're already, it's almost like you're sandbagging. It's almost like, yeah. it's like, okay, you, oh, you've got 15 amateur fights. How about you take a pro fight, fucker? Like, quit beating up people that don't know anything. And, like, that's the, when you see a guy that's like, yeah, I've done this for three months, and you're like, oh, fuck, and he just sucks all the dicks up there on stage, and you're like, kudos to you. Like, yeah, just man. Just like, yeah. right on, brother. Yeah. Like, you know, and stick yeah. it out. And because then those guys that stick it out, they get strong. They get fired, you know? Yeah, man. That was beautiful to watch. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Reichel. Do you even go by Mr. Reichel anymore, or is it a strictly red band at this point? I know. Oh, we're going to tag. Are we going to tag? Gonna tag, tag. over here. Okay. Tag me in. Tag yeah, me out, man. Uh, you know, I, uh, I uh, yeah, Reichel for people that, when I'm not working, I guess. Like, if I meet somebody, I'm wondering, I'm, if like I'm, wondering I'm like, maybe Brian should just change his name legally, and it's just red band, like Madonna or Bono right. or something like that, right? Yeah. The Edge. Yeah, it's, what's weird is that when I, when I first started saying Red Band... I like the new weird. hats, man. Those are great. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, they look great. Yeah, uh, when I started saying Red Band first, though, it, it was like, you know, alien to me. But now it's like somebody says Red Band, I'm always like... Like, it's almost like, oh, that's my name. Well, it's, <laughs> it's really weird right. for me because I, I, when I, uh, I was gone for a few years and then came back and... and, and and people were calling you Red. They're like, "Oh, where's Red Band?" I'm like, "Red Band." And like, uh, and because I, I remember you were, when you were telling me one time, you're like, "Well, Red Band is this. The, it's the thing in the movies that." And you're explaining where the name originates from. Right now, you hear Red Band trailers all the time. Right, never heard it ever before. Yeah. You told me that, yeah. and I was like, 
I was like, that's a trip. And, and, um, and then everybody's just adopted it for your name. I'm like, no, where's Brian? And they're yeah. like, Brian? Like, I was like. Yeah, I remember when we first met. You were saying, like, when you pulled up, we were in the limo. I, yeah. I remember that day immediately. I remember your beard uh, game back then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which mean, which it, was it, like a goatee with stripes cut in yeah, it, right? Yeah, it looked that like was an it. anime of you screaming, like, hello! You I know, like, like your, your face actually looked like, uh, like a I don't a know where book. that came from. Uh, it was interesting. No, it was always fun seeing your different transformations of your your hair, your beard, yeah. uh, and uh, it was it was it was so interesting hanging out because we hung out a lot. Like all every time, weekend, dude. we would be in a different for city. like three or four days you'd, every every week. Right? You'd torture me all the time by like, hey, come over to my room, and then you'd like come out in your boxers and I just would, like do I, jumping jacks. It's not. Me. It's not. It's not like you didn't love all that. <laughs> I remember times in Tempe. <laughs> What's that? He made that up. I don't do jumping jacks, you guys. <laughs> I have video of it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, somebody who showed me, they, they tagged me in uh, in one of those um, 10-foot screws videos. Yeah. Fucking hilarious. Dude, I was looking through my Flickr, I think. I look good as fuck in that day. wig. Yeah. I, you know, I just put that wig on a couple weeks oh, ago. Oh, yeah, 10-foot screw wig. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really <laughs> good. We should do that again sometime. We should do a whole show. Ten foot screws. We, we had should, a fake. We should to, get to, a to understand for the, the people at home, we yeah, used to I'm play sorry. a fake band. Or uh, we were in Denver, Colorado, and first time uh, I met Ari Shafir. Yeah, was there time, too. And uh, we decided to go wig it's, shopping. And by we, it's it's me, Eddie Bravo, Brian, Joe. And maybe Ari, but but no, we didn't meet Ari till later that night because yeah. I met him in the wig, and then he was freaked out when he saw me without the wig because he thought that was my shit. <laughs> That's right. And oh. so we were like walking around. We went to a wig store for some reason. Yeah, we were on like what Seventeenth Street Mall or one yeah. of those walking malls in in Denver, whatever's downtown there. Yeah, and we all decided to buy wigs, and and then we decided to make a fake band up called Ten Foot Screws, which was based off Nine Inch Nails. Because I was like, oh, it should be like Ten Foot so Screws. Good. And then uh, we went on stage. Like Rogan, like actually called us up on stage. It was like, guys, it's so weird. Yeah, you where's know, this, the after party? This band is in town <laughs> right now. It's one of my favorite bands ever. And then like he called us up on stage as this fake band. And the people in the audience didn't know us, like podcast style. No. They had no idea who we were. Not a clue. And so we went on stage as this fake band, and everyone thought we were a real band. Eddie was really into it too, because Eddie's a musician and he loves all that attention and everything mm -hmm. else. And so he goes out. And the funny thing too about it is that. Um, um, the, there was people that were like, no, no, I've heard you guys. Like, there's people that, that, that dug that. All right. And, uh, and, and, um, 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 so Eddie, I remember Eddie was looking for a name. And yeah. he's like, I got to get a name. What should my name be? And I'm like, your name is Eddie Bravo. That's the best rock and <laughs> know, roll yeah, name ever. You sounds. like, like, that's, that was what people would want to right. make their name up to be if they wanted to be in a absolutely, rock band. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nikki Six, Eddie Bravo. Like, yes. Yeah, exactly. It was awesome. It, yeah, Eddie, it, it's so interesting seeing old school Eddie, now now new school right. Eddie. Yeah, pre-tattoos. Pre-tattoos. I, I was thinking about that the other day, how like Eddie used to be one of the most amazing people to go to a bar with just seeing his he had such a game back in the day you know I'll like say. like him and mike young uh <laughs> they, well, they really just knew how to talk and 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 talk to women and like uh, and then crazy uh crazy larry mm. crazy larry uh crazy uh what's his face that uh chambers yeah no not chambers uh Fucking the dude that's uh, all like in prison right now. <laughs> uh, Gerald Streetman? No. Uh, f I think Gerald's getting out, maybe. No, I'm not talking about Gerald. I'm talking about. Uh, uh, shit, I can't even think of it. He's in prison Max right now. M Mark. Shit. Mayhem. Mayhem Miller. Oh, Jason Miller. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's crazy. That that guy, uh, I saw him recently here at the comedy really? store. Really? Yeah. And was he? he was a little interesting. I'll just use the word interesting. And uh, then out of nowhere, he just like went off on me on Twitter. And I was like, what the fuck? And then I wrote back, you with the good ideas, always with the good ideas. And then literally six hours later, he was arrested for attacking a cop. <laughs> like, yeah. I guess the police went to his house recently, and he threw, like, Ooh. things at him. And, like, I think in California, there's, like, a third strike rule. Oh, yeah. And I think he's passed those strikes. I think this well, might be... Well, there used to be. I think they rescinded the third strike rule. They, they found that it didn't work. Oh, really? They, um, they took that away? But yeah. it's not good. 
anyway, no. and and uh, he's been he's been in a lot of trouble. And like, uh, yeah, that's a he, he's it's unfortunate. A, he's a beautiful dude, and, and at his best, and 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 frightening and terrifying. He really worst. he really freaks me out. Yeah. Like like he freaked me out last time I hung out. With but what him. a personality! Who, yeah. who could have had a bigger career comedically yeah. or at, like he's fantastic in all those ways. He had that show Bully Beatdown for a mm-hmm. while, and I was like, man. But he seems more like a bully than than right. You know, like that, that is, that's the weird thing about that well, show because he he's he flipped he, right. Yeah, he's, he he definitely had to have flipped because the old him was always kind of crazy but he kind of was you know still together to the point where he was like my friend I right. thought but now it's like nowadays it's like I don't even know who I'm talking to it's kind of like Brody Steen you keep an something. eye on him yeah. is, is Brody that way <laughs> well no I mean anyone that has any Brody, kind of Brody jumped on me on Twitter once oh, I was yeah. like hey buddy yeah let's not get dumb <laughs> So let's just relax, pal. What is going on, Tate Fletcher? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. mental illness is really a thing that I have to deal with all the time because of the girls I date. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it, it's something I never really had to deal with in Ohio as much that I do it's with Los weird, Angeles. Right? Out here, everybody I talk to... Why is demon, that? It's, it's, it's the entertainment industry. When it comes to comedians, when it comes to actors playing make-believe or anything... Can I tell you, since I moved to Venice... There's less of that. You think? Hollywood is bad. Yeah. Like, this is where it's centered, for sure. For definitely we, we, so. get, we get sparks of it down there, but it's like it gets absorbed by the ocean. No, like, the, Venice is uh, the people that... It has, were, the crazy people in Venice are on the street. Yeah. Like, that's what's happening yeah. there. Well, it's also Venice... The crazy people in Hollywood are on trust funds. I follow, yeah, I follow Venice 311 on Twitter, and it makes me never want to go to Venice again. They're they're focusing on the dark side. <laughs> yeah, but or, the, that dark side's intense. Or like, maybe I, fo- I follow Burbank three one one, and you know what it is? It's like guy got pulled over for speeding. Guy- <laughs> that's, that, but that's because people would like people to move to Burbank. I hope to increase to increase the the revenue and everything that happens in Burbank. We don't want anybody else in Venice. It's oh, crowded see. enough. So you're, you say there's plans. I'm saying that there's, there's, plan, there's plans there. <laughs> Tower 7, bro. It, it was like this, bro. It was, uh, how, about, how about, remember when we had Carmageddon? Yeah. And they shut down the 405, uh-huh. and they're like, dude, it's going to be wrecked everywhere. It was the most peaceful days in Santa Monica and Venice. It was beautiful. Yes. You know why? Because all those fuck bags from the fucking valley got to stay in the valley. Sorry about it, guys. You're not allowed into the good part of the city anymore. you got to stay in the valley. Right. And it was awesome. It was freedom. That's what that was. Uh, they should put a wall up. You know what, Trump? Stop that Mexico shit about, oh, I'm going to put a wall up and all that kind of stuff. Do it right across the Hollywood Hills so everybody in the valley has to stay in the valley. You made your choice. Have fun. I agree. I think that Venice is the best place to bring, to, to have a family. <laughs> I think it's... Uh... <laughs> the Shoreline Crips are raising you know, a lot of good families down there. Tate, Tate, it's easy to say that Venice is awesome when you're Tate. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you're Brian Rick. Reichel. I don't even know my you know, last well, name we'll anymore. Get a, but let's just, here's what would happen if we fast forward a little bit and we go on, okay, we got Red Band come down here. Pretty soon Red Band would be synonymous with like being swole and just fucking and just and just out there slaying bitches and doing big fucking lifts and throwing boulders around. And- I don't have the energy for that. Like the like like literally whatever I've never ever ever in my life it's have true. woke up and gone Holy shit! I need to go outside and go do something. Like you know what? Whatever though, that I never part- have either. I don't have that. No, I have. It's my I wake self-hatred. Up and I'm I think like, I'm run on self hatred though. I wake up tired. I wake up tired. <laughs> I, I wake, wake up, up and go. I am so tired. <laughs> yeah, I get that. And it might be sleep apnea. I haven't done that whole thing yet. No, what does that even mean? I know that, that like, uh, like you Joey you stop that. breathing in the middle of the night and then you wake up <laughs> like and then you do that thing and then you probably have it because it's 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 definitely has something to do with. I've the, had women tell me that I that I that, snore. Yeah. yeah, that I or that it's like they're like that I stop breathing mm-hmm. and and stuff. At you certain probably times. have it. I'm guessing you have it. Rogan has it. Ro- really? Joey Diaz has it. I know Joey does because he was on a machine for a while. Yeah, for, no, right? he still is. And and but Rogan has like a special de- mouthpiece. It depends which way that I sleep. If I'm sleeping on my back. It right. comes out, and then if I'm sleeping on my side, it doesn't, or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I have drop. I had a drop cam in my house, and uh, uh, what? Uh, it's uh, this camera that records twenty four seven. I put it, you and I recorded myself dirty, for a week. Dirty son of a bitch! <laughs> oh. You're filthy. <laughs> so I recorded myself for a week, and what's cool is that anytime it detects noise or, or it uh, movement, it, it it records it. Yep. And so. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like I, like when I did it, I, I saw the, for the week, 
I had times when I did, definitely was snoring, but I wasn't like doing the where like, <laughs> right. But I don't know. I, I wake up really tired, and then throughout the day, I'm more like nap. Yes, like I don't ever How have naps energy. Do you take a week. Uh, I don't take many naps, but what I do is I definitely have moved most of my uh, uh, life into my bed. So, like, if I, I don't have a kitchen table anymore, I, I eat in bed. When you fuck, I, do you have to move and make space and be like, oh, we're having a sexy time? No, today, no, no, so. no, no. I, I mean, I, I do my sheets like twice a week now, where right. I used to do like every couple of years. Right. And uh, no, I feel <laughs> you. I have one. <laughs> but now, now I because because it's also a kitchen table, uh, like you know a uh, whatever you, the right thing you put on your kitchen table. What's that called? <laughs> like a cutting board? No, no, no. Like the oh, sheet. tablecloth. Tablecloth. Yeah. So my bed spread is now a tablecloth. So I have to clean it a little bit more because I eat in bed. Crumbs. I fuck in bed. I work in bed. I, I I just do everything from bed now. I have a California King. It's like the I spent all my money on my bed. I was nice. like, you know what? I spend half my time in bed. Let's, I'm going to get the best bed. Yeah, bed why am I buying get? like a used bed from the alley? You know, like so I got a bed that is in the bottom. It's like the NASA shit. You know, the NASA phone. Right. Then there's like a gel on top of it, right. and then it's just veal. Like they took veal, <laughs> <laughs> they made it a paste. Like and, and I love it, but that. it's vacuum wrapped, so you won't so it's smell like, it. And it's like a pate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when you're done, you switch Dude, it out. Veal, the veal top, it's grass fed veal. Like the the veal top makes a difference. The- <laughs> you don't want corn fed. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm with you. I, I bought a really expensive bed this year too, and I was yeah. like, "This is," and it makes the best all purchase I've ever the goddamn made in my difference. Life. And I don't want to leave it. I'm like, "This is super nice." No, it's great, and I don't feel sore when I get up. I used to be like in some beds, I'd be like, "Fuck, that was like I was in a fight all night." Right. And then this is just like, "Ooh, I kitchen feel tables good. are for if you have kids." You right. know, like it's kind of like you you can't all be in bed. You have to, you know, or it's weird. Gets weird. Yeah. Speaking of that. What's the most number of girls that you've had in that bed at one time? Uh, uh, you know, that bed, I've probably had two. I had, uh, the most I've ever had was two. But uh, That's enough. Two is enough. Yeah, yeah. But when I used to live in Ohio, I lived with seven girls in this house. No, you didn't. This is like a porn. Come on. I promise you. When I lived in Ohio, I had uh, seven. You know, one of the weirdest things, by the way, uh, Tate, is like when I moved here, one of the first arguments I ever had with uh, Eddie and Joe, they were like, how many people have you slept with? And I think I said like 100. Right. And they're like, no way. No way. And and they like totally bashed me the whole night. I'm like, no, really. I'm like 31. Like, like, I've had about a. Right. And I remember they just clowned me the whole night. Now you said that was your, that was your first. <laughs> so, anyways, I li- used to live with seven girls uh, in, in in college, and uh, it really sucked because one of them used to get beat up all the time by her boyfriend, who would also hang out there. No, yeah, it was horrible. Uh, and I'm I'm you know, back then I was just like a skinny hippie, and I couldn't really do it. I confronted him once, and he got in my face. It was like one of those. And things. you're like, what am I going to do? Because she keeps asking him to come over anyway. No, so I, what, I just waited for him to leave, and I fucked her. And I, I tried, <laughs> <laughs> like, you feel better like now, right? Like a gentleman. <laughs> Like a gentleman. But I remember uh, the best, one of the best times I ever had, I had all my roommates in my bed. I was in the middle. We all watched because I, I was the only person that, that any of them knew that had a Laserdisc player. Because when I turned 18, so you all watched I Sex bought a Laserdisc. City. No, we watched Terminator 2, I think. Wow. <laughs> but we had them all lay in. Like, I, I just remember laying in bed and we were all like tripping so on acid or something. Like We were wasted. When was the last time you did acid? I'm not going to do acid anymore. I, the last time I did acid was probably... Uh, Good twenty years ago. Really, that I used long? to sell acid. I used yeah, to have. I used to books. sell Bibles. I get books Bibles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I used to. I probably done over two hundred hits I'm of with acid, you. I'm right maybe there. somewhere yep. around there. Yeah. I mean, we used to. What do I it wish every day. I had done, dude. I, well, and then the thing that's a bummer. I don't know if you guys don't do acid or whatever out there in the world, but. You, if you it's take great. a half a hit on a Friday, that's awesome. You get a bunch of beers, go out, party, well, trip your balls. But you better take a hit, a hit and a half on Saturday if you want to get off again. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be a weirder trip yeah, too. It's going to be and unclean. that's acid back in the day. We don't even know this acid nowadays. What's it about? Yeah. I, I'm I'm scared to take that. Here's the problem with acid. You're just like, worried about strip a, nine or something back then. Yeah, back then we're like, oh no, we get in a car accident, our back's going to get hit. And <laughs> right, right. You need a spot. Yeah, well, they used to say when I was in high school, they used to say. You go legally insane after seven hits. Right. And I was like, how many half hits now? I got <laughs> I one know. summer when I got an acid, I'm like, I'm over the mark. I actually knew a, 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 
well, anyway, so let's go back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, acid. Back then, like it was different. Like nowadays, I have no idea what the acid is right. nowadays. So I, I, I'm too scared. I, I'm more like mushrooms. Like I would rather have acid, but three hours, yes. and uh, and it's healthier because it's like grass fed or whatever. Hopefully. But um, back then, we used to be like, oh, micro dots. It was, or micro I used dot, to sell masculine. sugar cubes at one yeah. point. It was liquid really? acid. And uh, Beavis and Butthead and Jesus Christ were the two best ones that I remember. I remember Beavis. Uh, yeah, Beavis and Butthead yep. were the best. That was the best acid. Uh, Mitsubishi was another one. Uh, but... But that uh, sunshine microdot, I remember we micro could dots. get that, dude, micro and those dots. were great. Yes. They're great. But I really remember, I wish that that acid, I wish I'd done on. Instead of that, I wish I'd done a bunch of mushrooms. Because uh, yeah, I probably only I, had 50 mushroom trips. Did you? How many bad trips did you? I, I would probably say in acid, I had probably a good 10 bad trips. Uh, mushrooms, I've had a good five bad trips. I haven't had bad ones. I've had ones that I was uncomfortable, and I felt like you feel like your brain is in a, a ringer, and it's twisting, and you're like... And you're like maybe at the at the sixth hour you're peaking like crazy, and I'm like, I could choose consciously to go over the edge, and I would never come back out. You you're kind of choosing to go into insanity or fighting for your right. sanity in a way, and you're like, I want it to stop, it's not gonna stop, and you feel like there'd be relief if you went into the insanity kind of just let go, but you fight through it, and then the rest of the night is good. But there's there's hard work that happens for about forty minutes in there somewhere, right? Yeah. And, that, and that is not great. No. That's not great. No, no. I, I'm glad I don't do acid. I don't want to ever do acid ever again. I heard you on a <laughs> podcast and said something like that. Or maybe it was Eddie talking the other day. He was talking about acid. And he's like, I just feel like it's like, um, you know, it's like synthetic or, or made up mushrooms. And I would rather take the real thing than take something that's made in a lab. I'd rather take mushrooms. Also, I don't want to devote half a day, if not a whole day, to a drug. And to me... That is like something that is uh, un- avoidable. Like I'll, I'll you, you know don't what I mean. Like mushrooms are like that. No, mushrooms to me have been one or two hours of crazy, three, four, five hours of calm down, your ass off, and then six hours of s- go to bed. Right, you know? but that's the whole day. <laughs> I mean, you, you that well, is, that's been your day. No, I mean not if you like have a, a, a normal day and you do mushrooms at like eight o'clock. <laughs> right, 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 right. Go to bed by four right. in the morning. Yeah, yeah. And four in the you're morning. Up you're at wake eleven up. or twelve, and you're good. Yep, five HTB. That, there's an acid hangover too. That's not great. I I think I candy flipped the other day by mistake. I had candy no idea. Flipped. Uh, it's where they take Molly. And is it like put, honey dicked? No, no. It's like where they take Molly and they mix it with acid or mushrooms. Uh, I had some Molly the other day that I tripped on, like visually. Check and it I- out, dude. That ecstasy. I had a friend, and and we're in Arizona at the time, and uh, doing a bunch of nefarious shit. And I went to this party, and I'm looking at all these people, and they're all on the nod. And I'm like, "What's going on here?" He goes, "Oh, I just sold. Uh, you know, I was selling ecstasy to these guys. I go, That's not." I said, she looks like she's on dope. Like, she's nodding off and drooling right now. And he's like, well, yeah. He says, I just mix crystal and heroin together, and I sell it to these kids. I'm like, that is not great. That's hor- right. that's a horrible thing to do to somebody. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's like dosing somebody. Yeah, it's not cool. And, huh, yeah, I'm kind of over that. I'm, I'm 41 now, Tate, so it's like I – Nobody would guess that. I know, because I come on my own face every night. Oh, but like I've, I'm kind of past most most of the drugs. Like like I'll I'll do a little coke here and there. Do you once worry in a while about or... like I trip on this? Is that like people that are all gluten free or vegetarian or there's all this stuff and that they're still in the party scene? And I'm like, you worry about all the little fucking parts of your diet, but you will take a powder that's wrapped up in a Playboy fucking page right. and you will snort that up your fucking face from yeah. a stranger that Absolutely. you didn't know, Absolutely. and you're like, mm, no problems here. Yeah. Like that's uh, no no. How, and so now with pills and with everything else, uh, I'm like fuck pills, dude. Now I'm so old school that like if somebody gives me cocaine, first I find out who gives it to me. Right. But other than that, if I ever have cocaine, it will last me a good two months. It's more one of those things where I'm like, man, I'm not feeling awake today. I'll have one line. But I've really, never, I've never ever. I could never do it that I've way. I've never ever had with coke or mo- any drug I've, except weed. I've never had. To the point where I'm like, I want to do more. I want to do more. I want to do more. Fuck. I want to do more. I've never had that. You alcohol are so and weed. Lucky. Alcohol and weed. Are I've the seen only it two. with the alcohol with you. It's yeah. unlovely. Oh no. Well, alcohol for me is mostly Ohio. 
If you go to Ohio, there's it was a billion also, of it me. Was, it, was also, it was also Phoenix one night. No, no. I mean, oh, Ohio, no, it's I mean, it's built like that. Built like that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's Ohio. If you go to Ohio, we all do it. That's why Tony Hinchcliffe does it. That's why PDC, if you know PDC, does it. Anyone, Jamie, if you know anyone Hinchcliffe from Ohio. Hinchcliffe gets like that? Oh, yeah. No way. Dude, Tony drinks every single night, every single night, three or four. He's so sweet, night. though. What? He's like a sweet little pussy cat. <laughs> Dude, you could fuck him. I can. I well, can for <laughs> sure. That's how I see Tony. <laughs> He's got a gay face. You just throw your dick at it. Uh, no, it, like it's, um, it's just Ohio. That's how you grew up, right? Michigan, same, same. There's nothing to do in Ohio. No. Yeah, exactly. Michigan, same exact yeah. thing. To me, I, I, I just for fun because I got out of a relationship lately and I wanted to prove something. I didn't drink all last week. Not once did I go. Oh my god, I didn't drink. Like, right. well, that thing that was cocaine, like. <laughs> When I like people are like, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, I got an eight ball or whatever, and they're like, so what are you gonna do? I'm like, I'm doing cocaine. And they're like, yeah, but what are you gonna do? I'm like, I, I'm doing cocaine. Like, when, that means I'm at home, the TV's on, the volume is down, and the fucking shades are closed, and I'm kind of looking out the window every now and then. Yeah, and that's it. And I'm doing line after line after like that's right. kind of that's right. the way that night goes. It's not like a party thing for me, you know? Yeah, I uh, yeah, I've never been addicted to anything majorly. I would say cigarettes and uh, alcohol. Are you still most. smoking? Yeah. Yep. Do you? What do you think about the e stuff? I don't like it. They look silly as shit. They're stupid. When you're, I see you're, guys you're actually, smoking that, I'm, I'm like, actually smoking more if I'm on the e. Just stuff. get yourself a camel and fucking act like a goddamn yeah, I, man. Like, what take is it wrong or not with take you? It. Yeah. I mean, I, the the cool thing about that also is that I'm I can I've quit a million times, but I've always started back up due to my life. Uh, right, you know what I mean? Right. So uh, it's only going to take w- something to probably cancer for me. But like, you know what? I'll quit. No, but the, I, like what I see for <laughs> no, you I mean, is I, I think that like, don't you think eventually you get into a place where you're like, you know what? Maybe I get turned on by running a marathon or by doing uh, X, Y, or Z, and you and you turn my a page all in your stress. life. My shit's all stress. Like but cigarettes you are completely to do that. What if you got into yoga? Stress. What if you, you know? What if you got something that you're like? See, if I'm not. I'm not going to get into yoga unless I'm dating a girl that's into yoga. My whole thing. You hear that, is, ladies? If you're out there, <laughs> hit him up at Red Band. <laughs> My whole thing is that I like being comfortable uh, at home first. So that's my main objective in front of job, in front well, of smoking everything. Smoking weed, like you're smoking weed a lot. Does I'm not it, as much as you think I do. But but couldn't that be like instead of you're like yeah every time I want a cigarette I just smoke a little weed like it's it's oh no I tried that no 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 no, no because I don't like smoking weed really really like, like to me weed is a tool like hey I want to paint I might smoke a bowl or two or do you prefer I'm to smoke draw. or do you like ed- edibles. I hate edibles. No, no. I, I like a joint. You're old school. Yeah, I'm a joint. And I'm, it's only for a reason, though. Like, if I'm like, all right, have to think of something funny, smoke a, a couple hits of a joint. I'm not Joey Diaz where I'm, like, eating all day, smoking all day. I'm not like Ooh, that at all. Yeah, I'm, like, yeah. way more boring than you probably He's think He's a I consumer. <laughs> I wake up and have Starbucks. I smoke maybe one hit. If I do smoke one hit. Except then you got Christy Mack and Phoenix Marie over at your house. And... <laughs> I understand. Uh, well, so what do you think about all this Charlie Sheen shit? Tomorrow morning, by the way, the AIDS, this is recorded. Right? Well, this is what supposedly I heard is that he had AIDS for a while. It was fucking girls, no Didn't condoms. Tell anybody. And his AIDS, quote unquote, went away. But what kind of doctors is he right. doing crack with? And paying a million dollars. So I had to go through like the, the Rolodex in my head, like, nope, well, nope, 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 I'm good. <laughs> you know yeah, he banged a lot of porn yeah, stars. I know a lot of girls that he banged. Uh, a good friend of mine he dated. And Who's that, can you say? Brett Rossi. And uh, like I wrote her today. She didn't write me back. So I'm like kind of freaked out. You know, like I'm like, yikes. I didn't fuck any of these girls, so I'm good. But for my friends, I'm kind of concerned. Crazy, man. And he's always allegedly had this like whole, I've heard this from many girls, like, oh, yeah, he paid me $10,000 just to hang out for the day and blah, 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 allegedly. You know, like, and I don't even know if this girl's lying or, or telling me the truth, but I know a lot of those girls that all say the same thing. So this might be, and then that girl fucks another um, five other guys. Of course. This might be, like, he might be like the next Hitler of AIDS. 
<laughs> I don't think guys can get AIDS from girls. Huh? I don't think guys can get AIDS yeah, from girls. Yeah, if she's every period and you're drinking it like a milkshake, like your boy Brian Right, does. exactly. You'd have, to, you'd have to do that. You'd have to do it like that. And you're drinking it like a milkshake. <laughs> oh, uh, that's dark. That is, yeah, dude. I, I wonder, too, like, uh, what about, did you see Pamela Anderson says she beat Hep C? She's yeah. like, there's a cure for hep C. Yeah, I like, think there's like a couple doctors. I feel like that I'd have heard from, about that yeah. if there was a cure for hep C. No, no, yeah, and supposedly we don't know, but tomorrow supposedly he's going to say that he uh, is like HIV is not detectable anymore in his bloodstream is what is supposedly going to happen. So immediately you have to think that the doctor is the same as Michael Jackson's ex-doctor, you know, like it's some bullshit Hollywood crap hole that like this doctor's getting paid millions of dollars. Like, no, dude, don't detect it anymore. Yeah, I want the, I want the NSA to be yeah, certain, looking at his blood. It's, it's, uh, and it's unfortunate because I know a lot of, I know a lot of girls that fucked him or uh, hung out with him. For say. 10 grand. Yeah. A if, lot you're down on your, if you're down on your luck. And you're like, you know what? I can make three hundred thousand this month by hanging out with him every day. Allegedly. But, but maybe I maybe I get the <laughs> HIV. Right. I, there's times in my life where you maybe roll those dice. I don't know. <laughs> it's better than getting a box cover for your next uh, platinum video from yeah. Vivid. <laughs> right. Is maybe. porn still a thing? Is that even real anymore? They don't do porn in California anymore since the condom laws, right? They don't. Yeah, they, oh yeah, they still do. It's, it's all in. It's all in Vegas. The, all those girls moved to Vegas. I don't think so. A lot of them are in Vegas. I right think now. most porn girls don't exist anymore. They're called cam girls, and they cut out the middleman, and now they're just like fucking their buttholes, like on myfreecams.com and shit like that. Do you own that website? No. I feel like they all live in Arizona or Vegas. A lot of them live in Arizona for sure. Huh. <laughs> what, what was your interest when you first started being able to date? Because you kind of had a big resurgence. I was saying earlier, like the, um, you, you know, like you're you're a wild man. You're a, you're a loose cannon. You're a maverick. You're a heretic. You're out there in the woods. You're just you're 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 more than John McCain ever thought he could be. And uh, and. and with what your evolution has been in the time I've known you, and to come to to come from fucking where you come from, which it's a trip, like everything that's happened, right? And then mm -hmm. and then you're like, yeah, I'll come to L.A. And then you're here, and then get it all together with you. And you moved with your girlfriend, right? Yeah, originally yeah, I I remember, I did yeah. for like ten years. A or beautiful so. deal, like that was great. And and then you guys all find your own lives out here. Mm -hmm. And then as as you continue down that road, like. Um, I started hitting more, uh, uh, you know, like uh, schizophrenic forums. Uh, yeah, you got, we got different <laughs> girls in that way. But the thing you also did is at the same time, you, um, I remember when you first wanted to do comedy and you first, like, you always had an itch to do it. And I think we we're in Florida and you were hammered. And or, oh, I yeah. don't know where it was. But you got up. And uh, it was just like me and Ari in an empty room after the fucking end of the thing, and you just went up and giggled in the mic and then ran off all funny, like, and and that was it. And then when I came back to L.A., you know, years later, and fuck, I watched you and I fell over laughing. You were awesome, and 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 to see whatever breakthrough that was, where you're like, fuck it, I'm just gonna jump up because it's scary. It's a daunting thing. Like, what was that like for you? Like the first time you went on stage and and the the yearning to do it for years, maybe I would imagine before you actually went and busted your cherry. When I lived in Ohio, I used to do open mic for a good year and a half, two years. Uh, out of two years, I probably went up seven times. Uh, the seventh time I went up. Uh, was the day Bob Hope died. And this was like kind of after 9 11. And when he died, I had a joke and I did it and Didn't it go bombed. Very well. Yeah, I got booed off stage. So then I stopped doing comedy. I was like, you know what? I've been doing this for two years. I've gone up seven times. I've been here every week. I've called off jobs. And this I've, last one hurt. And this last one just really went to, like, this is not worth it. Right. Like, I'm putting way too much time in to just be feel bad like you know right. it's like it's like hey bully punch me you know right like, <laughs> and that's what a crowd is yeah. like if they're unkind yeah. to you it's like you're not it's not like it's like nurturing yeah the joke was uh bob hope died and you know like we we're in war in iraq or whatever still is 
But uh, I was like, hey, do you think they flew out Bob Hope's dead body to Iraq to entertain all the dead troops? And it was... <laughs> God damn, the way your yeah. mind works, Brian. <laughs> right, so I, I, oh, I quit. Jesus. And then Rogan, we were in Atlanta, and uh, Rogan goes... Hey, I want you to go up. This is a sold out show. And I'm like, I'm not going. I haven't gone up, you know, in three years. Right. He goes, I want you to go up. So he threw me on stage in front of a sold out show. I hadn't been up in three years. I don't even didn't even have my jokes on me. I think I was like look, like Google or at the time my spacing or something like trying to find jokes that I used to do. I did up and I did okay. And then for a good like year or two, every show Rogan would throw me up and. Then so I kind of got it like a cheat code to doing yeah. comedy. Yeah. So I went from open mic to ch- opening up for Joe Rogan, uh, and so it, it teaches you real quick how to do it. And then uh, I don't know. I th- I think uh, the Joe Rogan podcast. If you look at listen to the early versions of it, I used to be not a comic, and then there was one where I'm like, whatever, I'll try it then, fine. And then it's so weird how. Maybe in the last three or four years, I've really grown because I've been doing it so much, and now it's just second nature. It's just me, you know. Like, what's I, cool about it too is I remember Joe was talking about it a long time ago, and he's like, "Man, it'd be cool to do a class or something." He says, "I could cut off the time on somebody becoming a good comic." So uh, he's like, "I'd love true. to help and give back like that and whatever." And now, what we just came from tonight was Kill Tony Kill podcast, Tony. and they say, which is precisely what you guys are doing. Yeah. Like you're giving, you know, it looks like a, a like a fuck job, like where it's like, "Oh, I'm going to have these guys up here, and we're going to tease some new comics." It's not what it is at all. New comics come up, do a sixty second bit, and then you guys, you you and Tony and a couple other comics critique them and tell them how to make things better and give them clues and it's fucking awesome because you would never get that anywhere else we've never had that growing up there's never been like any comic never had there's never been a nurturing thing it's like fuck you and i'm gonna try to tease you out of the room kind of shit yeah exactly it's like a wrestler (laughs) i'm I'm really jealous of what we do you know because i wish i was a comic and i wish i got to and somebody yeah i wish i had it recorded on the internet and not live stream so i could listen to it in hd like like i i it's it's almost not fair like it's it's like i'm very jealous of and it is it kill tony is like a cheat code if you follow it uh if you do kill tony it's it's and if you're living in des moines or something and you're listening to that the the advice that is given to comics here at the comedy store if you hear that on kill tony you're gonna get that's your advice too because it's really universal right it's not like it's like this works for that's for everybody like these are rules that everybody needs to know yeah exactly and it's not like we're always nice though like there's sometimes where it's just you have to the black guy that killed it tonight Mm-hmm. I fucking I had to go piss and I went down and I missed him and, and Keith is like dude that guy was awesome yeah and then that's cool too to watch you go hey what are you guys doing Friday night you want to come down to the and yeah. it's like yes, yeah I invite him to man. a real show invite a lot him to of these a real people show. have never been to a and rub done elbows a real with show. real comics yeah. find out what a green room looks like yeah and do we fucking do a podcast cool. in the green room uh, oh really yeah, yeah on Fridays on I- Ice House Chronicles red which is, uh, red you know, we've been doing for f- almost four years now. So it's 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 a podcast where we all just like, oh, oh my god, I just ate shit on stage, and and then like then another comic goes and leaves the podcast to right. go on stage. So it's kind of cool. Well, you you get like a little weed, insight. You go through his jacket. And yeah, smoke yeah, all exactly. His drugs. So, but if you're a comic, I mean, how cool is that? You get Super to see cool, a green man. room before you've even been in yeah, a green room. Where you, you don't know, even like, deserve yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, you don't even deserve to be in this green room, and you get to hear what it's like. And yep. I wish. I could have watched Steve Martin, you know, in the seventies. Could you imagine him in the green room and just hanging out with I mean, that's whatever? What saying like, I'm like, yeah, Kinnison probably fuck somebody yeah. on this table. Like, yeah. this place is legendary where we are. There's ghosts in here right now. Yeah, I want to talk too about like the beginnings of the 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 podcast and like from when there was like a segue from Joe Show and then that kind of ends and then and then the podcast happened shortly after. You want to take a a, a break and, and grab a cocktail? Yeah, I would love to. All right, cool. All right. Cool. So we're back, man. Um, and uh, this is fucking cool, man. I'm so glad you're here. I really appreciate you taking I the love time, you, man. Tate. I love I you too. It's it's, it's fucking rad. Here. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's like a special time, you know. Like I feel like um, it's like that thing too. Like I feel like there's those people, uh, and it's really only really like really authentic people that you can do it with. But like where there's like 
you see each other and there's no time passing. and you know each other in a way that is um, kind of really transparent and sh- and it's just nice, man. It's really nice. I, I'm just uh, relishing the moment. You're one right of the few first people uh, that actually was friends with me in Los Angeles. In Los like, Angeles, it's like <laughs> Duncan, Ari, yeah. Joe, Eddie, you. I mean, you know what's funny too about that? Joey. I was thinking about that that um, where we all are, you know, and it's like. What that environment of having people that have that kind of growth mindset and the mindset to be like, you know what I'm going to try, even if people laugh at me or even if it's hard or even if it's whatever, whatever the obstacles are that we get out of our ways. And those are all people like that. And it's like, and they didn't quit. They kept trying. And, and, and we're all doing really like, I, I get so impressed, man. I remember when I drove up, I was driving up over here by Ari's old house. Ari had left the apartment already. And I drive up La Cienega and I hit sunset. And boom, the billboard that was right over where his apartment was, was his big fat nose up there for his show. And I was like, I got so, I tweeted it right away. I got super. And then Joe retweeted it. Like everybody, like yeah. it was just a succession. And it's like, man, it's just fucking a beautiful it's thing weird. to be a part of, you it's know? It's weird. Uh, we all pretty much saw the, the egg that hatched. Yeah. Uh, all of us almost, you know? It's wild. It's, and, and I, you know, I really, I thank Joe in the, in the way that is a lot. Like I, I really, uh, and I really think in what he said, you know, that, that thing about being free of the confines of money and, and all that in a way that allows you to get your mind outside of other things. And like, and, and, and you don't have to be rich to get outside the confines of money. That's, that's not the point Joe happened to be, but that's not the thing. It's like to think in these bigger ways, it uh, becomes so much more valuable to grow as a person and then and then your life gets monetized by doing whatever like Alan Watts has a great little video about that that I love to post and repost but he talks about doing the thing that you love and then for sure if you do that thing you'll become a master of that thing and other people will like that thing also and eventually that'll be a thing that you'll get to do for your life and and that's the way that's the way good lives are built it's like it's like making a living isn't just making the dollars making a living is like are you living the life of your dreams that you're creating stuff and for me that means being in creation I want to be creating the next thing i want to create a movement that moves people towards this greater idea and uh and these things are awesome thing for that purpose you know that's what's exciting about you get to choose like people are like god people are negative on the internet or what like people can have all kinds of commentary on that dude my twitter feed is nothing but love like if you're a jerk i block you like if you and that means if you're mean to one of my friends you say mean stuff about somebody or you're diminishing towards people i don't even know i don't like that so and it it bothers me it makes my soul sick a little bit so then i just block that person i'm like well i guess i'll never have to see that person again the only thing i get sad about is i go "Uh, maybe that person would say something valuable later but likely not you know (laughs) i I look at it as like i cut uh real friends out of real life i cut the fat you know, so sure. like I'm definitely going to cut fat and like people that are just like faceless Wanna voices yeah. on the internet, yeah, echoing <laughs> yeah, negative I, derogatory you know, stuff. I cut for the dumbest shit too. Like if, if anything that I'm like, oh, if I was at a party and you just said that to me, I'd be like, nope, I'm going to look the other way. So I, I'll just right. cut. It's funny too because a lot of times I fall into a thing where I'm overly sensitive and people are like, no. uh, they're like, dude, I was just trying to tell a joke and I was like, nope. you should have thought better. That's a shit yeah. joke. Don't tell a joke that diminishes yeah. people. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, I don't, I don't give a shit anymore. Like I, I really don't give a <laughs> There's shit. There's just not time. There's not time for me to feel ugly inside a little bit over some stuff that is like I don't need to. So many people have come up to me also and like you banned me on Twitter, bro. And then I'm like, oh, I did. Dude, oh. I had guys that begged me <laughs> but to the- get you to add them. They're like. Get, tell Red Band just to let me to unblock. I'm like, I feel yeah, like that I, happened for a reason, yeah, and that's not. Uh, yeah, what's funny is that every single time that's happened, and it's probably happened like three times. Uh, I end up feeling kind of bad about it because I see them in my face, right? But then after hanging out with them, I'm like, oh, I see why I did this, right? <laughs> and and you're like, oh, they don't they don't know how bad they are <laughs> if they like could a, see a fucking cunt bag. <laughs> So at the onset of uh, podcasting, man, like you're like, you know, uh, uh, a pioneer in it and, and, you know, you're at the beginning of it. You know, there's there's other guys like I guess Carol and Mark Marin, like but those are the only two really that were maybe before. Um, oh, there's a shitload before. The, the but they, 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 they got they, 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 they got real them. they got real traction, though. Yeah, I yeah, mean, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, as far as real po- followings and and. Uh, you know, and and then and then Joe's like, what was what were the conversations before where Joe was like, oh, somebody's doing this, and maybe this would be a cool thing to do. I'll and- tell you what it is, a hundred percent. This is exactly what happened. I used to follow around Joe with a camera, and then when I made the Carlos Mencia versus Joe Rogan video, I got banned from the Comedy Store along with Joe, and or, or whatever happened. Yeah, yeah. But uh, 
when during that time it was a good six years or whatever that i would come here with you and joe and joey and ari and duncan and everyone and we would just film at the comedy store kind of like a pre-podcast but it was video i would make these things called the joe shows which were these like little little video shorts and like 12 minutes or whatever yeah, like little minutes, short deals like like 10 foot screws what we yep. talked about earlier was one um then once we were gone, I would go on the road with Joe, and I would do like green room versions of what I used to do. Now the problem was is that now it's no, there's no more guests. There's no more random people coming up to us at the comedy store. That you know there was random people in different cities, but after a while, after I did like maybe five of them, I realized, oh, this is a lot harder to like make something interesting out of a green room in Columbus, Ohio, than it was at the comedy store. Right. So then I thought, how can I make this so it's more interesting and like, because it would take me months to like edit like a video, trying to find a story out of all the footage that I had. Like, oh, I'm going to make a story about Joey Diaz thinking he's going to die. You know, like I had to like find ideas and I actually had to make little movies, (laughs) you know. Uh, So what I started doing is I started taking laptops in the green room at different cities and tried to get them to do this thing called Justin TV, which is now Twitch. Uh, I would open it up and be like, all right, so these guys are watching this live and they want to talk to us and ask us questions. It it was kind of, yeah, it was exactly like Periscope or, you know, and, uh, and I did that in a couple of cities. Joey Diaz hated it the most. He, uh, he one time attacked like me because it was like, <laughs> he doesn't like. Yeah, one time Joey like, like grabbed my hand and like bit my finger backwards like and started screaming bear. at me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was his Coke days, I think. But, uh, and then uh, I, me and Joey started doing podcasts, which was a podcast about uh, cats. About his and, cat. Yeah, yeah, cat. yeah. And then Joe was like, we should do like what we do in the green room at my house. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, it's this thing called podcast. We could totally – and he goes, no, let's just do a Ustream. So we started doing Ustreams. And it, the, the whole idea was was doing what we used to do in green rooms but doing it at his house. So he can just ask – people can ask questions and we put it up. Then after like the fourth or fifth episode, uh, people were like, dude, you should make this a podcast. I'm like, yeah, let's make it a podcast. So we – Joe and me decided to like make it a podcast. So we started doing podcasts. Then after that, it was just – Boom, 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 boom. We, every week, we would upgrade, you know, Joe would upgrade something and be like, all right, now we have, instead of these microphones, we have these microphones. And right. It was really cool because I never knew anything, like, about audio engineering or video engineering, I mean, or the stuff that goes behind making a podcast. So I had to learn how to use mixing boards and, like, all this stuff. So it was, you could watch us from Joe, uh, Show show or Joe Rogan experience number one all the way up. You can see us improve every week. There was something you know yeah. started off like this and that and that, and now it's like ridiculous. You know, it's like a full on like TV show. Almost. Yeah, you hear Jamie, <laughs> Jamie talking about yeah. it, and he's like, "I've got a guy that's helping me, Eric George, and he's just the last I don't know five or ten of these that I've done. He's he's he does does sound. I send them to him, and he does sound. He does the intro, does all that stuff, and and um, but." He and Jamie, I linked in on a on a text, and and he's like, "Yeah, how do we do video? We want to set up something at Tate's house, and that's easy to do." And it's like, it really comes down to you need another man in the room that is just doing just, that yeah. stuff. And and God bless uh, Jamie because you know after doing that for a while, I'm so glad I don't have to do it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> well, that takes a lot of. And conversely, uh, he's so glad that he does. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And it's he like has the a perfect great job thing. now. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but, but that was one of the big things. Like people are always like, "Why aren't you on the Joe Rogan podcast as much anymore? Or why aren't you doing as much more?" And I'm like, "Because I don't have to." <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, like I don't like it, there was. It started. That's another thing. It started off as a comedy podcast. Like we were just like talking about pussies and farts and dildos. And the next thing you know, we have Neil deGrasse Tyson on, and I'm asking if he if squirting happens in space. Right. So I think uh, that that the direction Joe is taking is awesome because now it's like a legit show. It's an like like he has show. yeah, it's it's more less comedy now. But that's what's cool is that me and Joe do this like we try to do it every week, but every his Monday schedule, or whatever. Like I, I, yeah, you, just when me you and just Joe. go on and you're like, yeah, yeah, let's just talk about current events yeah, and whatever. Internet. It's yeah. like us watching the internet, and I, I, I like that because that reminds me of the old idea where right. it was just me and him fucking around. And it's cool because that's just fun too. It's yeah. just like a couple of boys being silly, you know? Yeah, like, you know, pals yeah. getting together. Um, and that's 
the most fun about it, what's been vital in, in this for me is like, like are so enriching really is that I get to have conversations that I wouldn't normally have. I would never sit down and like we wouldn't like us not going on the road together anymore. It's like we're not sitting by the pool, um, you know, at the end of the night afterwards because there was no girls around or whatever. And you, me, and Ari are just talking for three hours. That, that, that doesn't happen anymore. Nobody's right. got time. It's like you don't have time to produce that show in the same way. And now Jamie does. But like when, when things start getting better for everybody, like your time becomes different. My time becomes different. And so these are like – like I, I get to talk to Greg Jackson. Like and I haven't really sat down with Greg because – it's been years since I've trained with Greg, but like to get down and do a podcast, wow, man, then you get to get into these conversations yeah, that great. are just invaluable. And it's something that me and you used to do all the time before we did a podcast after eating. Right. Like we would eat with Joe and me, you, and Joe, and a few others would sit there and talk for hours. hours, dude. hours. And, or we'd go to a radio station and they would like extend the show for hours so just crazy. because everyone loved it so much. Like it was such a. There was such a uh, uh, foreshadowing on everything that we did. Looking back yeah. retrospectively, for sure. <laughs> such a foreshadowing. For sure. You know, I just uh, did this thing. I don't know when they're going to do it, but it'll be out on uh, wherever. I don't know, Fight Pass or something like that. But they did a where are they now kind of thing for the UFC. And and, uh, and, and, and I go, I don't know if I have time to do it. I was kind of like, fuck, you know, like because mm. I'm busy and, like, that's not, like, helpful in any kind of way or whatever. And, and uh so uh, I, I think, well, what are you busy doing? And I, I give him a rundown. I go, well, you know, I fucking got to go to Dallas. And then why are you going to Dallas? Well, I've got these nightclubs that fucking uh, uh, are going out there, and we got an anniversary coming up for that. And then, um, and then you know, these guys want to do a, a reality show based on some of my shit. And then I've got this podcast that I'm doing. And then I've got Caveman Coffee. So me and Keith and Lacey made a coffee company, and we do that, and we ship that. And then we're opening up uh, licensees all over the country. We've got places. And, and then I've got my gym. And he's like, holy fuck. He's like, Man, well, come pitch that to us. We'd what love to do fuck? it. And, and, and that's Pil Pilgrim Films. And then um, – so I talked to them and their digital people and like I want to make like a I want to make a web show I want to make like a half hour web series or something that that's the time to do that is, also with is, the new Apple is, TVs is and kind of like that you and know? by the way I, I I got to go to Tate's uh, one of Tate's Concrete Cowboy uh, oh yeah yeah I, I've been to it a yeah, few yeah. times yeah. I've been I, I've actually been there a few times and I've always had. The so most good. fun ever, dude! You there. gotta go back to Dallas now because we just bought the place next door oh, across shit. the alley, and it, it's named Clutch. And so we have Clutch. Clutch. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and so, so we got Clutch. And, and so it's it, and it's more. It's got a full, a uh, full Did you know menu. Clutch is my troll name. No. Oh, I'm on many message boards under the username Clutch that I've never told. That is amazing. About this. There's a I have a long history with the word Clutch. So the fact that you have a bar named that Clutch awesome. makes me feel like you hacked me. <laughs> and you know something I don't know. I know but all yeah, your mail. All you Reese Witherspoon message board users, I'm sorry. You just found out that I'm Clutch. That is awesome. No, it's so weird that you said that. Yeah, and my fr it was based off that girl I did from Texas, from Houston. Yep, uh, that's how because I found out that she was on a Reese Witherspoon message board, and she would she was obsessed with it. So, and I'm like, what is she? Why is she so obsessed what's, with uh, Reese Witherspoon? There? And so I started a username named Clutch. And I started being her friend so on there, and I found out no, she just loves Reese, Reese Witherspoon. You're like nothing weird here. The only <laughs> like, thing weird here is me, <laughs> right? And now it's just weird that I am a fake person in Clutch. And now she's yeah. sad. She's like that Clutch guy must have died. But I don't yeah. know what happened to him. I hope um, he's okay. I I ended up using that username on many trolls on many message boards. So listen, we're gonna have one. In Houston, in the next month and a half, will be open. So nice. when you guys go on, to, so I do comedy in one of your places. <laughs> That'd be rad, dude. Why don't you have a comedy club if you're in the industry? Look at you, you're so funny. No, of, I mean you know all the best there, comics. There's all the all the all the all the best. All the, all, thinking all, right all now, the best, all the best, uh, <laughs> all the best money it's, it's is made, and in, 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 uh, for sure, like. They're all getting blown up with money, right? Comedy Dude, clubs. All that I know is Tate. You know some of the best comedians in the world. <laughs> I, do, I know. I know them all. And you, you are in Look the industry. Don't say that shit to me. I'm busy enough. I'm busy enough. <laughs> don't say that to you. Uh, that would be fun. You know, Rogan right? was just saying the other day. He goes, 
dude, I'd like to get a show in uh, in Santa Fe. Or in, I'm like, yeah, dog. Well, bro. I said, well, you want me to call? He's like, I got. I'm like, well, yeah. What kind of asshole am I? Of course, you got people that can call people. Never mind. <laughs> I have a question about the Ronda fight. Ronda Rousey? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, like, a couple months ago, I actually thought, and I think I even said this on a podcast probably, that, like, no one can beat Ronda Rousey. Right. That's, that's at least what they're making us feel. Sure. Now, when this girl but came... But you know history, and you know that we said that about Chuck Liddell, about right. George St. Pierre. Absolutely. You know, there's, you know... So I get that part of it. That's, like, a build-up, or that's, like, like... Is actually made, you know that, yes. that whole idea is yes. created or whatever, or whatever. So, anyways, uh, this the, the way in. I felt like Rhonda looked like she was hungover. She had the flu. She looked what Joe Rogan always calls me gray, like like a lot of different adverbs. Is that the right adjectives? Adjectives. <laughs> was an adverb. Well, an adverb <laughs> is describing an action. Like he's a fast runner. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and yeah. an adjective, adjective is describing yeah, yeah, an absolutely noun. adjective. Um, but I almost think, like, I almost thought that Dana White was just call Rhonda up. It's like, look, you, the night before the fight, you party like crazy. You just go crazy. You just, you know, you just. You think he's feeding her shots? Yeah, I think he's just giving her Jägermeister shots. Like, I, I, I really think they wanted her to lose just so they can have her come back. And, like, I, 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 I felt like if you watch that weigh in, and you watch every single other weigh-in or interview that she does. She lost her cool fast. She looked like she was like fucking sick as fuck. And I almost think that they were just pretty much like, dude, you don't have to throw the fight. But here, I want you to check this whole bottle of Firewall ball. <laughs> <laughs> I would say no way. You don't. You say no way. No, but like something maybe happened behind the scenes and I don't know I'll talk to Holly I think next week do you think Holly and her broke up like the day before but there, there was there was, there was definitely like an animosity and a right. fire when she walked out not right and then she, it's like she wanted to pick a fight there or it's like she needed to make Holly a villain and I don't know like the Betch Carrera thing I, I think is a thing Joe disagrees with me on this where he's like well, then Betts talked about her dad. No, she didn't. That's not what happened. What happened is, like, any shit talking that would happen, like, I'm going to beat you so bad in the cage, you're going to want to kill yourself. And she says that in some kind of broken English, right? Mm -hmm. Like, she didn't know there was a history of that in anybody's family or right. anything like that. Now, Rhonda likes to have something to catch on to to make it, like, a, a story, and, like, and that helps fire her up as an athlete. Fair enough. And I think she wanted to have that peace with Holly, and so she did that with the whole thing. You're not as nice as I thought, or whatever. And and, and which it was it was a weird it was a weird it was way in. It was an awkward way in. However, not think, unlike her, also though, unlike her. But then in the fight, it's also you're juxtaposed with somebody that cuts a lot of weight to get to 35. Hey, if you started farting flowers right now, I'd be like, there's something not right. Like sure. if, like like everyone saw that also. I when I I, I tweeted something about it was very unlike her and everyone agreed like it's right something wasn't right and that they're not talking about that as much as they are talking about that's why i say i believe there was something behind the scenes yes. that we don't know we don't know that that went on but in the fight itself also what you're looking at holly always looks that way when you see her on fight day mm -hmm. she doesn't ever not look like that she never gets out of shape I've known her 15 years I've never seen her out of shape. She's always... You grew up in the same city, right? Basically, rip, well, we fought together on the same team. And so uh, she's a member of Jackson Winklejohn. And, and, oh, cool. um, and she was one of Mike Winklejohn's original students from when she was 13 or 15. Do you know she's ticklish? Uh, I don't know that. Uh, never been close to her really that much without boxing gloves on. Um, what if she was really ticklish, though? Most girls I know... If you're ticklish, well, maybe that's she's why, really ticklish. Maybe that's why she avoided the ground game. Yeah. You know what I mean? What if you were to tickle her? If you're fighting, does tickling oh, turn off? This is, what, this is why you get the, <laughs> the catchphrase, oh, Brian. Oh, does Brian. Does tickling turn off, though, when you're fighting? Yes. It does turn off. Like pain turns off. Yeah. However, the so, shock of a dislocated jaw or a broken yeah. jaw doesn't turn off. And that's what we saw right away that nobody talked about also. Mm -hmm. was well, Holly also broke her hand. I heard. Oh, did she? I heard she broke her hand also, which is crazy. But she threw that big left, <laughs> and and then I I saw you know, and it was so early in the fight. But normally, when you see a mouth a mouth open on a fighter, mm -hmm. it's because they're sucking air yeah, and you they're tired. That, you called that like, night. I was like, no, it's the first round. She's not tired. She 
I bet her jaw's broken. And then she got hit a bunch more times after that. And so I, I think that that changed, you know, that of course changed everything. But um, what a what a splendid way to look at it in that way. But, yeah. you know, as far as like a, a, she really put on a clinic, Holly did, and she executed a beautiful right. game plan. But um, I'm really amazed at it. That that it happened and everybody shocked and, the world, right? And looking back, though, I really feel like there's something more to it that we won't know about for I a while. I believe so too, but I also believe that the greatest good will come of it all. Like whatever those, whatever that thing is, that'll get divulged, and and Rhonda will learn from it, and Holly will learn from it, and every girl watching will learn from it, and other athletes will learn from it. And the game has just been raised. I mean, you've got an athlete that's a champion now at the top level that doesn't ever get into shape. She just stays in shape. And so her technical abilities get better and better and better with every training session she does. She's never training to get into shape. She's only training to get better. And that's different than most athletes that we see fighting today. Because most of they party, they do X, Y, and Z. Here's somebody that's about it, man. And she's been a professional athlete for over a decade. And that's that's different. She's on a different level. And we just got to see, too, like there's a real striking athlete, like a true striking athlete that's a champion crossover in MMA. So MMA. And and, uh, and it's the only time that there there have been belts held in both of those. You know, there's guys that have been What's cocky. the ground game like? Who how is yeah. better and better all the time. Really? Great. I mean, and you see it right now. You see a top-level grappler, mm -hmm. and she's able to disengage and, and, and get out and stand up and get away, which is the yeah, right thing to do. Yeah, she escaped Ronda. But yeah, then what the yeah. scary, scary thing is, when I saw her and she got double underhooks and did a low back clinch, and she took Ronda down. And I'm like, holy Boy, shit. I'm like, and at first I'm like, you don't want to take her down. And then I was like, she that she knows what she's doing. And she's got con to have confidence to take down a black belt like Ronda Rousey and, and be on top of her and, and execute a ground and pound. That's a, that's a tremendous amount of confidence in now, your ground. Now, I, she did it. I feel like maybe UFC hit her. Is there any other people that you know of that you're like, you know what? Those other two people are hidden also. Hidden. Hidden from, like, they're not going to be pumped up just yet. You know, like, they're not going to be the next Ronda Rousey I don't think killer. the UFC wanted, Ronda, wanted Holly to win. Yeah, I don't think they did either to a point. I also thought that, that, that it got to the point where a lot of people were like, no one can beat her in, in the right, UFC. Right, right. So I think... There has to be a couple others that's on the shelf that they know that. I don't think there's anybody of the caliber that Holly Holm is. Really? Not anybody. Wow. Misha Tate, I think, is a tremendous athlete. And what about very, Cyborg? Very well-rounded. Cyborg is, I think, a tremendous striker. I, I, you know, I haven't seen enough of Cyborg fighting, and I don't think she's been um, active enough to be able to really say. And you don't know. It's kind of like, you know, when you could go, ooh, her striking looked awesome. Well, against her it did. But it didn't look as awesome against her. Like, and so, depending on who Cyborg's fighting, which aren't, they're not top level people generally, it's just hard to say, you know, and, and matchups are what makes those fights look interesting. But, you know, you'll get, you'll get to see that thing. You'll get to see, I think nobody wants to stand with Holly ever now, and people are just going to shoot doubles on her and try to get her to the ground. Yeah. Tate, if a girl's on her pussy, would you eat it? Of course. Mm -hmm. If like a girl's that. on her rag, is what you mean, right? Yeah. Yeah. I is like it too that. many drinks in? You like it uh, bloody? It, like it just tastes like iron. Yeah, it's so nice. you it's just get iron deal. in your mouth. No, not a big deal. I don't. I, I, I didn't. But a, but a gross. People are like, oh, do you have it. your red wing? And I'm like, what, what the fuck? I, I, I don't. I like to eat yeah. pussy. I'm yeah. gonna eat that thing. Like, like no matter what, who cares? What about butthole? You eat butthole? Yeah, oh, sure. It's the cleanest part of a woman's body. It's clean at least three. True. No, it's clean three or four times a day. Charmin. Like it's. Yeah. Um. Anyway. When did you start noticing results on podcasts as far as like in comedy rooms and, and blowing up like you're going from this kind of a zero on your paycheck to this many zeros? Like well, you're I don't, have, decibel I don't points. have sponsors at Death Squad. You know, it's crazy is that I, you I got a, So you got a whole network, Death Squad network. Yeah, I, I had this whole st very stupid theory that I didn't want anything edited or censored. I want to be able to play a YouTube video. Fighter and the Kid do song. that. Huh? Fighter and the Kid does that. Uh, they can't have it on YouTube though. Like oh, okay. I, like we can play like on Death Squad. We can play songs. We can look at YouTube videos. We can look at news. We can do what we can look at porn if we wanted to. Right. We can do whatever the fuck we want because we don't have any sponsors attached to us. No money attached to the podcast. So that you that that. So you your know. whole money though is predicated on that people listen to zero this. money. The people listen Zero money. To this. No, I spend all my money on Death Squad. Every single paycheck I get goes to doing helping other people's careers. 
But doesn't it make your spots when you go and you get booked somewhere bigger? Sure. It might. But if I had a manager, I could totally take advantage of being booked throughout the United States, countries, different countries. You interested in that like. or are you too busy and excited about uh, doing these other Managers things? don't want to book me for some reason. Managers don't like me. Uh, they think uh, I'm too dirty. I'm too uh, whatever. You know, I make my only money on making uh, – I take my all my art and make them T-shirts or products like Death Squad T-shirts right. and stuff. That pays for everything I do. But when it comes down to it, oh, shit, I'm milking. I'm taking every single dollar I have to make sure that Ari, Tom, Sam, everybody that I, that's ever been on Death Squad – becomes known and i've been so successful at it it's awesome you know our everyone that i know is very popular now it's great but when it comes down to it i'm like probably going to be bankrupt pretty soon Shut in up. jail no really no way super real why don't you um monetize it because i don't want to ru- ruin the whole idea which was but don't you uncensored. think you can still get sponsors by it i mean let's like like well, you look at how on it was developed all right uh, because Aubrey was a fan. Aubrey was selling those fleshlights, right? Mm-hmm. And then they're like, we like vitamins and we like optimization. And Rogan's like, I'll bankroll it, right? Is that basically what happened? I have no idea, but I'm guessing Whatever, something, like something like that. But like, that's a sex toy. That is like, so like you could probably get um, Joe Jenna Rogan can play Joe Jenna Rogan Jenna podcast pussy to Joe Rogan podcast. podcast. Joe Rogan podcast can't pull up a video. Without thinking that somebody's gonna be mad, be mad, and it's gonna get pulled down. Then poor Jamie's the gotta edit it out and stuff. What like are that. the laws on uh, like songs and stuff like that? Like it's, you can't do it. I hear Joey Diaz does it though. Joey, uh, Joey does Diaz it is that on YouTube. He's he, Joey Diaz. Is, I don't even know what Joey Diaz is doing his own thing. But like, I'm talking about YouTube, and that's where you make all your money, and it, where we have sponsors or whatever like that. I don't think Joey Diaz is on YouTube. If he is, yeah, then it's heavily edited. But uh, uh, no, it, it's it's a big issue because uh, when you mix money, you mix uh, freedom of speech. It takes a hit every time. And my idea was not to have any censorship on comedy ever. And it, it's a horrible idea. It's the worst idea ever. It takes the funny it, out of it. It takes all my money out of the bank and makes me have to roll coins. It's 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 really that bad. Like it's a bad idea. But lately I've been separating all my shows into different feeds so that in the future uh, we could have sponsors. Like, if you just want to sponsor Kill Tony, we can do that. Right. And, and it, I should have done that in the beginning. But the, the I, my whole idea was I didn't want to have any censorship. But uh, th- that's obviously not working. <laughs> well, but also where this is going, I think, you know, you look into the future a little bit, and it's like these are shows that are valuable entertainment that can be monetized, and you've already built the show, so you tweak I, it a little bit so yeah. that it's able to be, yeah. you know. I didn't do Death Squad for money, though. I did Death Squad just to help friends out. Like, yeah. I was just trying to help Ari out. I was just trying to help Tom out. I was trying what, to help about, Duncan out. What about Death, Death Squad Network? Um yeah, Death Squad Network now is... Do you know is, those guys? What? Do you know those guys? Who? The, uh, or what is it? Death Squad Network? No, there's a lot of fake Death Squad people there, that are making the, money off of There's like websites that are out there that have yeah, like yeah, my yeah. full bio. And they make and money and off of the Death Squad name. Yeah, that's a trip. Yeah, yeah. The only, the only official thing is DeathSquad.tv. And like all the, there's a million death squad names on Twitter. They have nothing to do with me. Right. There's a million websites that are replaying my, uh, my shit, like with money. Dude, there's that, there's that. people that replay. Uh, somebody sent me a link, and there's like my Periscope is uh, is uh, uh, on like MMA websites and shit. I'm like, how, I didn't even know you could take your Periscope and jack it like that. I'm like, it's just it's just scam it's artists. A trip. It's scam artists, losers. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's a it's a weird thing, Tate. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a really weird thing. So uh, where where do people find uh, merchandise? Like you got these sick hats, stickers, uh, all that is all on Death Squad TV. Sure, Death Squad TV. No, it's uh, Shop Squad TV. Shop Squad. Yeah, I, I actually did a T-shirt the other day on Periscope. Fancy I drew the whole T-shirt on Periscope, and it's really cool. It's one of my favorite T-shirts I ever, ever made. Uh, but now I do like small. T-shirts, like only like 40 40 T-shirts. So they're, Make them like collector's editions yep. because it makes me uh, draw more and paint more if I do it that way. 
and that uh, is awesome. So man. it's cool. So I, it makes me like draw more and paint more. So How many cool. pets do you have right now? Just one dog. That's it. Yep, all of them died, or I murdered them. He didn't, he didn't really murder. The no, I just threw him over my friend's. No, fences. he doesn't do that stuff. Yeah. He doesn't. He loves. He's Actually, an animal lover. Yeah. I was thinking of getting <laughs> one of those hairless him. cats. I love hairless cats. Our friend has one that is. I heard they're the best so cuddlers. Cute. So warm. They're hotter than normal cats. It's like a, cuddling yeah. a ball sack or like a, a, a hot water bottle mm-hmm. or something like that. But yep. not it that really I've cuddled is. ball. Don't make it weird, people. I don't cuddle ball sacks, but you know what I mean. Right. All right. Well, let's go downstairs. Yeah, let's do it. I love you, and I thank you for coming I and love doing you, this. Tate. And, I'm so um, glad that you're doing a podcast now. So you have cool. caveman coffee. I put out too many. Tate, you are blowing the fuck up, and I love it. Thank you. I let, can't let, wait let, to let, sleep on your couch for life. I'll, 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 <laughs> I, when, 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 when this thing gets monetized, this goddamn podcast, I'll get a two-bedroom place, and you can have one of the bedrooms. Nice. But you're going to have to get rid of the dog. All right. I'll eat it. Goddamn. All right. Thank you, goddamn people. And uh, I hope you're having a good time. And please just get out there and try. Hustle that will, shit. Will somebody some please folks. buy a bird to sit on Tate's mustache? A little parakeet. <laughs> a little tiny parakeet. I want to see a little bird just hanging on I your like mustache. That. It'd be cool. I'm going to post one. I have a picture of me with a parrot, a live parrot on my shoulder uh, from a little independent film I did this last year. I want to. I'm gonna bur- baby little tall small. We'll bird. work it out. You know, you people. I'm easy to find. You follow me around on Periscope. Uh, you can find me uh, at, at I Tate just Fletcher. You on, uh, yeah, I just followed you on Periscope. I didn't know you were on Periscope. I'm pretty. I'm pretty uh, good. Dude, I, I can't Periscope. Wait to watch your good. Periscopes. I do a little coffee. Do you watch scope. my Periscopes at all? A little bit, I, but only if there's girls involved. You ever do? Uh, you ever see me? Uh, You've always got the hottest scopes? girls with you. No, I haven't seen a shower scope, but I thought of doing one before. Have you heard about it? No. It's where I eat shitty food, fast food in no, the shower. Tell me this. So I'm like eating like a, a Big br- Mac, like or a, a, a taco from or Taco Bell while shower and conditioner is in it, and I'm just I also clean out the drain. You and know I get the, all the things hair. you do for the people is uh, <laughs> it's like I think we'll leave it right there, and you guys just know there's a guy out there pulling for you. His name is Brian Reichel, and you can find him at Redman uh, Death Squad dot TV Shop Squad dot com or dot TV dot TV dot TV and. Uh, Bless Joe Rogan all you podcast. goddamn people. And yeah, you can maybe check out some folks that are interesting on Joe Rogan podcast. Brian Reichel, original producer of that show and um, innovator and creator and animal lover. Don't let all the harsh words fool you. All right. Thanks.